Welcome everyone to episode 364 of the Postgame Report. I'm JVB. With me, I have TG1 Eddie. Yo, yo, yo! So, we're going to talk about the PlayStation event. But something what? happened after this, after, after this <laughs> event. <laughs> Why don't you explain what happened, Eddie? Yeah, I already pre-ordered uh, my PlayStation 4 Pro. I have that already set. And I'm pretty much guaranteed a 4K TV in about three weeks. <laughs> Nice. Well, so I'm pretty much ready. I'm pretty much ready for this new, uh, let's call it, you know, new era of gaming. It, is it certainly exciting. is. certainly is. I'll give it that. It, it definitely is a new direction for gaming, and it, maybe it, it needed to start rolling in that direction. I mean, compared to the press conference, because <clears> those guys <throat> were killing me. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> everything they showed was good, but the way they talked, they could put anybody to sleep. Ah, <laughs> well, Mark Cerny is it's like Mr. Mellow, you know, Mr. Yeah. Hippie. So, and then we have a, a familiar voice. Actually, Golf, uh, one of our listeners was asking me if you and I had any beef going on. Really? And actually, actually, let me let me um. Whoa! Let me get his name. His name is Alex. Uh huh. And he goes Where'd by the name. From? Goes by the name of Mr. Skyzon on Twitter. Where would that come from? Uh, well, talked about some Twitter beef and some community beef, you know, mm-hmm. the usual. And because you weren't on for a while, Golf he was asking. For a month. He, yeah, well, he was asking if it was you. Oh, and I, you know, I assured him that no, it was. <laughs> oh man, no, I. It's kind of my fault because I've been going to the beach a lot. Yeah, yeah. I told them so, you were on vacation, and you and I yeah. chat a lot about, you know, action figures. Oh, yeah. we're. Ner- so. If people only <laughs> knew the stuff that me and Jay talk about, I mean, we're, I know. we're, we're like we're, two big kids. <laughs> yeah, we are two big kids, man. <laughs> yeah, you're always showing me, like, new action figures, and I'm like, oh, you know, and I show it to my son. And- I'm always taking hey. pictures of my shit and sending it to you and geeking out and the toys that is not not his other. I, I don't shit. call them yeah. they're they're little plastic <laughs> people. That's what I call them. Yeah, yeah, collectibles. Yeah, just like that <laughs> Bruce Lee on that arcade machine. Yeah, that that was awesome, dude. <laughs> my son wants. Uh, I almost bought him one, and uh, I wasn't what, sure if he wanted Bruce it. Lee? Yeah, and then uh, he told me no, right I want now, one. man. That's forty dollars. Yep, forty dollars on Amazon. I think I paid. Yeah, I got to check it out then. Sweet, sweet. Now, before we move on, I want to read a review that we got on August 31st. Today is September 7th. And the gentleman's name is still alive in 2015. Now, he also has a channel. Uh, His YouTube channel is Everything According to Me. So make sure you check him out. He sounds a lot like Derek Gott. Believe it or not, he really does. Like, if you if you get a chance, uh, Eddie and, and Golf, check out his channel and tell me that's not freaking Derek Gott. But anyway, he left us a five-star review. And the title of the review, which is on iTunes, by the way, this review, he says, Great Gaming Podcast. Uh, the review states, These guys keep it real when talking about games. And don't Hold anything back like some of those paid for game reviews, uh, like those other podcasts. He also states, keep up the good work, guys. And uh, once again, he puts everything according to me, and that's his YouTube channel. So make sure you check it out. And also, if you want to have your review read on Post Game Report, head over to iTunes, check us out, Post Game Report. And leave us a review. We'll give you a shout out and we'll read it on air. So thank you very much, Jay. I believe his name is Jay. Could be wrong, but Jay, uh, can I add to that? Yes, sir. Uh, I, I've I've said many times that being honest is like one of the greatest forms of love you can give somebody. And I think that we definitely are honest and sometimes brutally honest, and people, I guess, don't accept it, but. I think that you know he's right. I mean, there there are podcasts out there that you know they're biased, 
you know, maybe they're paid off. Who knows? You know, they don't want to piss off their developer friends or whatever. But you know, we call it as it is, man. That's what they call shade. No, <laughs> 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 no but we we've talked about this various times, and yeah, yeah, you know, a lot of times when. Forget about the fact that we do video games. A lot of times when you're with your friends, with your loved ones, sometimes the truth is difficult because you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Or you don't want to look like an a-hole. <laughs> because usually the truth is hard to take. A lot of people don't find, can't take the truth. Like, you know, like the movie. Like when uh, Jack Nicholson said, you can't handle the truth. Mm -hmm. Especially in today's sure. society. Gonna yeah. People yeah. cannot handle the truth. They don't know how to handle it because I hate to say it, but a lot of people, and Neff would say this, the pacification of America. He stole uh, that from me, by the way. Nah. <laughs> when you have kids well, growing up, ah, when you have kids growing up in sports and they get participation trophies for being last, yeah, that's you're not teaching you're not teaching the importance of winning, the importance of pushing yourself to the limit so that you're competing against your friends and, and, the, and the competition is so strong and, and, and so raw that you're going to find a way, you're going to will your, your, yourself to be better than your friend who might be bigger and stronger than you. You're not teaching kids that nowadays. How many, you know, remember Rudy? We're not teaching that movie? kids rejection. Yo, we're not teaching kids. I'm not saying us. I'm saying overall as society. Yeah, there's, there, there's something where, <clears throat> and it's not just kids anymore. It's young adults who grew up like this. And the cycle is just continuing. That's why America's in trouble because of <clears throat> all this shit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But Jay, if you go to a Dairy Queen on, on a Sunday. Who are you calling a Dairy Queen? No, <laughs> <laughs> you're you're going to see... A lot of kids at a Dairy Queen, and I guarantee you there's winners and losers in there. Dude, I work in the projects, bro. I I see – I grew up in that type of environment. And it's amazing how time has frozen for me because I still see it, and I know how to handle it. I mean, I literally sometimes I walk into a building where my shop is located, and there are people – shooting fucking heroin in their arms and they look at me and they all scatter like a, like roaches and i gotta deal with that you know like when is you know i gotta wonder like when the hell am i gonna walk into something and they freaking attack me or you know one of them attacks me with a needle so i always gotta like be on my toes today's and that's you know that's from unfortunately for me being experienced in handling that it was rough. It still is rough as an adult. Kids nowadays, they wouldn't know how to handle themselves in that situation. Because, unfortunately, they have a lot of social networks that keeps them busy. They don't go outside. They see everything on TV and they assume that they're experts. Perfect example yesterday. Dude, I, I saw this kid was going to get fucking splattered right in front of me. I'm at a stoplight. This kid next to me just keeps walking. He's looking at the oncoming traffic to see if anybody's coming. He starts drifting. There's no cars coming. But in the corner of my eye, in the opposite direction, I see a car coming. He had, you know, the car has the right of way, but the kid is still drifting towards the middle. At this point, he's already on the opposite lane, still looking the wrong direction. And I'm screaming, yo, yo, yo. The kid was oblivious to me screaming, oh, you know, no. to save it. And I'm like, holy crap. And there was another guy next to me looking like he, the dude was like frozen. That was next to me. And I'm like, oh my God, this kid's going to get smashed. And the car, thankfully saw him from far honked and the kid jumps in the air and scatters. And he's not a kid. He's like, you know, 17, 18. I'm like, and me and the other dude were both, you know, he's probably my age, maybe. We looked at each other like, man, what the hell, bro? You Let me know, ask like, you this. Is he wearing an Xbox t-shirt? Ah, <laughs> I think he had headphones. 
Oh. And, uh, I mean, like, seriously, if that was my son and I caught him doing that, I would give him an Undertaker leg, <laughs> leg kick right in the <laughs> face. Yo, I, don't sound, I don't play like that. I don't want to sound old, but when I played Little League Baseball, if we didn't win, we weren't getting ice cream from Derek. Oh, it's true. Oh. Yo, dude, your own parents would tell you, yo, you just didn't have it today. Next time, practice better. I tell, I tell that to my son, you know, whether he's drawing and I'm like, ah, it could look better. Because I don't want him to be used to hearing, yeah, that looks great. Because yeah. then he has nothing to strive for. He, he he can't go to somebody who will tell him, nah, dude, it's off. Or, dude, you could do better. Because I tell him that all the time. I'm like, dude, keep doing this. Keep doing that. Those are your boys, but you still got to compete against them. You know, I try to instill that competitive edge. Now, you can't. If a kid doesn't have it, he doesn't have it. But sometimes they just need to hear it mm-hmm. so that they're always on edge. They're always like, yo, I got to get better. I can't just accept that. Oh, yeah, yeah, it looks nice. Because that's the problem a lot of people have. People are so busy looking at their phones, their computers, doing something else, mainly their fucking phones. And, you know, the kid's like, mom, mom, look at this. And they'd look, oh, yeah, that looks nice. And then they just turn around taking selfies. And I'm not saying everybody does it, but, you know, I've seen it a lot. And, you know, it, if you hear it all the time, you're going to think you're, you're the best at what you do. You're going to think you're the greatest. And then we're <laughs> going to have people like we do now on the Internet uh, complaining and bitching and swearing that their opinions mean more than everybody else. And we're going to get to that. So, sorry about the non-video game talk, but that that is the post game report. Sometimes we'll start off in the most unorthodox way. So we're going to get to the PlayStation. That's JVB being a talk show host. <laughs> an old, an old cranky fart. Donahue. Ah, damn. Fucking Robert Downey so, Jr. <laughs> oh, dude, you're naming names that people will not know who the hell you are talking about, bro. That's true. That is true. That is, I better My stop. father used to watch Robert Downey Jr., Oh, he was awesome. Ah. With those big fake teeth and shit. Yeah, <laughs> smoking, <laughs> smoking yep. with that raspy voice. And he only came on at night. That's when crap like that was, like, unusual. Now it's the norm, when you know? when Geraldo Rivera had that, I guess he had KKK members or something. Yeah, and the chairs were flying and everything. He and his name yeah. got broken. I remember that shit. <laughs> and, dude, we are so old. We are mm-hmm. so old. Oh, my God. And that's what, late 80s, early 90s? Uh, yeah, I think so, early 90s. or Yeah, early early 80s probably. Wow. Yep. Oh, no, well, Robert Downey, hmm, probably mid-80s. Because I remember my pops used to love watching him at night. He used to be like, yo, yo, check him out, check him out. Uh, really quick, uh, did you guys finish the get down? Yes. Oh, I've done it a long time ago with that. What the hell is that? Wow. A new series on Netflix. Oh, he wasn't here when I asked the questions to you, Jay. You remember I was asking if that's how really it was back in the days? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And and quickly, I was thinking the other day, uh, I was thinking like, I was thinking about, uh, now I don't know if he's the main character, but um, uh, show enough, uh, Shaolin Fantastic, right? Mm-hmm. And instantly I thought about a, a friend of mine when I was seven, eight years old named Ronnie. Now, you think that Shaolin Fantastic is an over-exaggeration. But let me tell you guys, no, he's not. Because my friend Ronnie, he and I, very similar to what Golf Rat and I do, where we're, we talk about, Golf Rat and I, we're talking about a lot of collectibles and everything. Ronnie and I used to trade toys all the time. Like, dude, I got this, dude, I got that. And we also, at uh, Saturday afternoon, we would all go outside behind, uh, right in front of our building, there was Eddie, an abandoned dirt lot where a building used to be. <laughs> Just the same way, <laughs> bricks, abandoned cars, all you name it. And across the street was our softball field, our baseball, uh, football field, manhunt. Everything was played in that mm-hmm. dirt lot. 
and freaking kung fu fights. So after Saturday afternoon, after kung fu theater was all had finished, we will all run outside and practice what we just saw. And Ronnie and I, we were like, "Yo, let's start up our own gang," you know. So. <laughs> I think Ronnie was the Scorpio or some shit. <clears throat> and he was real serious, like, right? And he's like, you are the toad. <laughs> I'm like, why am I the toad? He goes, you gotta, you're big and you have to fight with your hands open like a real toad. So, you lo and behold, nah, 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 I didn't want to show him my long tongue. Oh, okay. But I remember one day after seeing a movie, right? He and I are like, you know, freaking practicing outside. And I took this, uh, there were like it was like a little chair, and I took the chair and blocked a, a, a leg sweep that he tried to do, and I was like, "Try that one more time." So I did it again. And, you know, I put the freaking leg down, leg of the chair down, and blocked it. And yo, in the dead serious voice, he goes, "Now oh, that is a great technique." <laughs> so I'm like, "Thank you, Sensei." You know, like, yo, we were dead serious that we thought we knew freaking kung fu so much so that when the day came that Ronnie, because everybody liked Ronnie. Like, he was skinny, skinny black dude, real chill, and didn't mess with nobody. Until one day, somebody was messing with Ronnie, and I was like, Ronnie's going to fight. Everybody surrounded, you know, the two. And Ronnie pulls out, like, the fucking uh, praying mantis technique. <laughs> like, he jumped up in the air with his... Fingers pointing in the air, like swung at that dude. I was like, oh, he knows karate for real. <laughs> so I started thinking about that like last week and laughing like, oh, my God, we were freaking dorks, man. We really thought we knew kung fu. Even I even had kung fu slippers. Yo, I wanted, big back yo, in the days. Yo, I, I remember having a ninja suit for Halloween, like a real ninja suit. So we were heavy. Yo, I had ninja stars. Uh, wooden nunchucks. Yeah, man, I, I bought Ninja <clears throat> Stars, and I took them home, and I threw them against the shed. Oh, and they and break. They ricocheted back, and one stuck in my kneecap. Oh, wow, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't hurt, I, but it was I, be, I bet Golf Rat was like, breaking the law, breaking the law. <laughs> I think I was <laughs> like too Beavis close, because they weren't very sharp. No, so no. I was throwing them, and they weren't sticking to the shed so i got really co close and i think yeah. i ricocheted one off a a nail or something and it came oh, back damn. and stuck right in my knee i mean it didn't stick in deep but enough that it was i was looking at it for a second and i'm like oh shit yo i used to have those uh swords with the and what are they called man? size yeah the two blades i had nunchucks i had all that shit yeah and yo i used to look in the back of the magazines where they sold all these freaking like Ninja stars and everything. I used to be like, I'm going to get that one. I'm going to get that one. <laughs> There know? was a big uh, martial art store, I think, in Philly. And it was, I think, like two floors. It was just all martial arts gear and shit. Nice. Yeah. yeah. yeah back then, that the way – it's funny. Growing up back then, I would look at all of that the same way I used to look at video game magazines. Mm -hmm. so I'm like, I want that. Oh, my God. Look at that karate suit. That looks dope. Oh, look at those slippers. Remember the, like, the karate slipper boots? <laughs> yeah. I remember the ninja boots. Crazy, I thought those man. were cool. Yeah, they were like the ninja boots, you know, with the padding in the front. Yeah, I remember going grocery shopping with my mom, and I go to where all the magazines are, and I look through all the wrestling magazines, and every time I'd see blood, I'd just be like, oh, yeah, that's, you know, let's, let's, let's read this. You know, they show the wrestlers <laughs> all bloody and shit. Yo, I saw those drawings of, that you did as a kid, oh, dude. Yeah. I'm not surprised. <laughs> hey, I grew up watching horror films. Uh, Give me a break. Yeah, I'm surprised golf is not like. If your son brought those home. Now, people that are listening are like thinking, what the fuck are we talking about? I, I found a scrapbook with all my drawings from when I was, I don't know, in grade school. And some of them were pretty dark. You know, They were horror themed. And I sent, a few, I sent a few to Jay, <laughs> and you, like, flipped out. I was cracking up, dude. I was like, like what if Yo, your son was 10 years old, awesome. he brought these drawings home and said, Dad, look what I drew. What would you do? I'll Honestly. have a talk with him. I'll, I'll sit him down, have a talk with him. Yeah. Oh, my God. <clears throat> I'll be like, yo, what's up, dude? You all right? 
Do you look at animals and want to just <laughs> open them up for any particular reason? Nah, they weren't that bad, dude. <clears throat> <laughs> ah, you know, it's always good to just once in a hey, while. I do it. Have, uh, have once in a while that it blew up, I'll sit next to my son. I'll be like, yo, how you doing? Everything cool? And he'll be like, yeah. And I'm like, all right. You know. Jay, I had four older brothers. I grew up watching horror films. You know. Dude, the, the, the thing? Uh, when I saw them drawings, all I can think, all I can hear in my head was, ch, ch, ch. <laughs> you know, that's how Michael Myers started, right? Doing drawings. Yeah, he did the crazy guys <laughs> drawing. <laughs> Michael. He made man. Michael. Nah, which depending which version you're talking about, if it's the Rob Zombie one, he made mask. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's talk about the PlayStation brand because. For, I'd say, let me see, four months or so, there's been uh, Andrew House made an official statement that there would be a more powerful PlayStation 4. Everybody called it the Neo. And because the Scorpio, which is the codename for the next Xbox, people were just assuming, all right, that's going to have... Six teraflops, so there's going to be something comparable. There were all these rumors going around, which were pretty freaking accurate. All the leaks with the slim and everything. So they were pretty on point, even with the iPhone 7, uh, Eddie. They were Mm -hmm. pretty on point, so nothing's safe nowadays. But anyway, so today, finally, the PlayStation event, the briefing, whatever you want to call it, uh, came and went. And they finally, it it was a little unfortunate that, you know, Right away, they start off with the slimmer PlayStation 4, and it was like, uh, you know, yeah, underwhelming. We yeah, we already knew yeah. about that. <laughs> they were like, so oh, damn. Took it out. They took it out and started with it. Just yeah, to get right away. Of, of course, of course. And so that goes on sale next week, the 15th of September. And it's going to be, what, 249 No, 299 299 Okay, current price of the and PlayStation that's, 4. that's taking over... The yes, place it's, we it's have. Going that's going to be the, that's going to be the basic console now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's a method that Xbox does it, PlayStation, Nintendo. So that's going to be that. Nothing spec wise is different. Besides, uh, some of the internals are going to require less power to operate everything. So you're going to get a cooler system, a quieter system, hopefully, and more power efficient. Mm-hmm. And, of now, course, now, the size. How disappointed are you guys that they're not offering a white model? <laughs> I'm sure they will. I'm sure. Yeah, that's <laughs> and I, that's I, I, coming in different colors. You know I know. And, 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 and Golf Rider is joking because he says that all Spanish dudes love the color white. So, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, you know, maybe the next Call of Duty, which is coming out pretty soon, that's going to, I'm sure it's going to have a bundle. So we'll see different colors. Then they went straight into the PlayStation 4 Pro. Now, the PlayStation 4 Pro, if you want to talk, the only specs I'm going to throw out is that they're saying double, maybe a little more of the processing power. I thought they said PS4. double. They said double. And it's 4.2 teraflops or, or whatever the flock. <laughs> so it is a legitimate upgrade. And I compared it, and we've talked about this, Eddie, because you mm-hmm. said, "Oh, I don't, I don't want a brand new console just yet." But I didn't. here is that method of, and you're a big Apple guy, so am I. All of us here. There, it seems like even video game consoles are now following that method of, you're going to get a console release, maybe three years down the line, you get an upgraded version of that particular console. And then maybe another three years down the line, you get the next iteration of that console yeah. or totally brand new one. Excuse me. So you would, I would at least compare this to the six, you know, iPhone, whatever S version, you know, the, the, the mid, the mid level, more powerful, same price, uh, as the launch one, very Apple like, and people yeah. have grown accustomed to to doing this because even Samsung is doing it. Smart watches, you get a freaking new one every freaking year. Mm-hmm. 
even cameras, camera manufacturers are starting, not as frequent, but Sony, they're doing it with their mirrorless cameras. They come out every year or every year and a half. So technology just moves faster and faster, more frequently. And people have grown have grown accustomed to that. So this now, is Jay, a method that part of the was problem, inevitable. Jay, do you think part of the problem is the PS4 and the Xbox One were both rushed out there? That no, we're getting, we're getting I don't, these I don't think, so quickly. I don't I think, think they're rushed. I think, I think there's a little bit of truth to that. Well, no. think of it this way, because because technology moves so fast, you can say, all right, we have a console that has this. By the time it's actually released and massly produced, that particular spec, those particular specs aren't as impressive anymore. So it's hard. Well, to- consoles weren't that impressive in the beginning. I mean, look at the – yeah, we make fun of the Xbox One, but it really struggled to run games at 720p, and a lot of games on the PS4 were 900p. But – some the were 10 on, is, some were 1080p, but they ran at 30 frames a second. Yeah, so, yeah. in my opinion, both but they were legit. But they were legit upgrades compared to the 360 and the PS3 from yep. a spec. You know, from they a were, spec but I, I believe that they came out <clears throat> a year too early. Maybe, maybe. I mean, we, dude, we were playing Last we, of Us. Yeah, right yeah, but the PS4 launch, dude. But don't forget. When the 360 launched, the biggest and most played game was Halo 2. So, you know, it's not it's not new for, you know, uh, it had backwards compatibility for certain games, and Halo 2 was like the no-brainer, and I'm glad it did. So the very early cycles of these consoles, you have a few launch titles, that, and then they're going to make port over some of the more popular games. And why not? Because, as we all know, last generation, 360 sold extremely freaking well. So they were gra- grabbing a lot of those. North America, it did. Yeah, so they were grabbing a lot of those people who were getting PlayStation 4s. And they were like, all right, we have a large market that never played this and this. This is a great excuse to port over some games. We'll have something to sell for a brand new console. I mean, it all goes hand in hand. But let's yeah, but Jay, talk- besides the, the minor spec increase, you are getting the new DualShock 4 controller. I wouldn't call and- this a minor spec increase. It's double the power. I mean, mm-hmm. It's not minor. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big deal. It's still going to have the 8, eight gigabytes of uh, DDR5, which is still fast RAM. Yeah. I, I'm okay. Yeah, you're right. It's more like a mid-level upgrade. I yeah, say. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not. So you get, you're not, getting the new controller, the DualShock yeah, newly designed. I wonder what else. You know, you have the light bar well, facing you now. Part of the light bar. You're also the, getting larger memory. So yeah. I think. Well, you're nine, getting storage. You're getting storage. Nine, one terabyte. Three ninety nine, I think, is a very <clears> fair price for this. But you also got to remember, you oh, yeah, have yeah. a lot of 4K content. So how how big is that one terabyte really going to be? Well, here's the thing. Now, now, let's go back to what the pro is all about. They they they've been touting this as an you know Mark Cerny came on and he was like, "There's a new experience." This is, and he even came out straight up from the very beginning and said, "This is not for everybody. This is not going to replace." This was Andrew Andrew House actually. Yeah. He said, this is not for everyone. This is for the person who might have a 4K television and wants to take his gaming to a different level. And they're not alienating people who currently have the PlayStation 4, so much so that they're adding HDR capability to the current PlayStation 4. Mm -hmm. Not everybody's going to have that capability on their TV either. So it's not going to appeal to everyone, but at least it's there. But... This Pro version is, as I stated, for those people who have the iPhone 6, they see the iPhone 6S, and it has 3D touch, slightly better power, a little bit better battery, and they're like, yo, I got to have it, (laughs) you know? So it's a luxury item. Or if you didn't get a PlayStation, now you have the ability to get the better, more powerful PlayStation. But the games are going to remain the same, in its core, and that's what Mark Cerny was saying. But when if developers want to take advantage, 
he was saying a lot of these games are going to be patched for the Pro. So that tells me it's not going to be upscaled because why would you need a patch to upscale a game? The TV and the, and the console is going to do that for you if it's just upscaling. Now, content-wise, you can stream 4K. That's the big difference between the Xbox One, Xbox One S, which has a dedicated 4K player, Blu-ray player, 4K Blu-ray, and the Pro is not. It's going to have a Blu-ray player, but it will stream 4K Netflix movies. Uh, what is it? 4K on Netflix and YouTube. And there are some Amazon movies, mainly their TV shows. Well, let me correct that. Their TV shows, if you're a Prime member, they have... A not, you know, a decent selection of 4K content that can actually take advantage of HDR. And they also allow you to buy 4K movies, but they're $30. Same price like the stores. Yeah, best, but they're expensive. Yeah, they're, they're expensive. That's another thing to take. So if they didn't include it, it's because the pricing of the increase in power to them is worth more than throwing in a 4K player. Now, the other thing is, and I mentioned this on Twitter because they're like we were talking how we opened up the show. There are people who like to, you know, just to stay with, I don't know. I don't want to say to stay relevant, but some people just like to go on Twitter and just blab shit without really thinking. Sony like has me. their own. Ah, Sony has their own. You do it for VR a reason. Dead. You do it for a reason. <laughs> sometimes I go. Sometimes I go along with it. Mm-hmm. But Sony has their own dedicated 4K streaming service. I have a very strong belief that that is the route they're going to go. They're going to go digital because they most likely see a trend. I mean, my wife and I, we enjoyed the shit out of uh, Jessica Jones in 4K. Narcos in 4K, The Get Down in 4K, Stranger Things in 4K. So the reason why I'm mentioning Netflix, because Netflix is like the number one streaming service. So are you really going to compete with that, with physical media that people probably won't buy? Or do you want to cater to the trend? People rather stream their movies nowadays. And now they have their own dedicated so? service as well, oh, yeah. and they're gonna push. The, so? They're gonna push the hell out Maybe of that. Maybe I'm old school, but I, I I still like physical. I haven't I thrown like in going out and, and buying a, a Blu-ray movie. I just I don't know. I, something I, the about last that one is... I bought was last one I bought because my son wanted it was Batman vs Superman. But we I already bought it on iTunes, so we That's have it digitally. I I Can I speak yeah. of one that you should buy uh, on Tuesday? What, uh, Civil, Trans- Civil. Transformers the movie on Blu-ray. Yes. Oh, I'm definitely getting that. Comes out definitely. Tuesday. Yeah. Definitely. And I, I, think, on... I think it's in 4K. Well, here's the thing. And, uh, you know, a friend of mine that I know on YouTube, he goes by The Killer. Uh, you might have seen his. Oh, you, you've seen his videos. The Killer 363, I think. Uh or, or is it Derek that watches his stuff? But you got me, man. He's very big into 4K, and, and and you know, for a while he was talking about how a lot of these 4K movies aren't really fully optimized or natively recorded in 4K. So just like Blu-ray in the beginning, you you're getting you know, what will be considered Blu-ray, but it's upscaled to a higher resolution to look good. Sometimes that's enough. Blu-ray in my 4K, when it upscales, it looks fantastic. So I, I'm i not complaining. And then when I stream in 4K, you can tell the difference instantly between 4K and 1080p. You know, it's just a different... It's a different picture to it. Not something ultra-drastic, but I can tell. 
So I, I got a feeling that's why they didn't include a drive because they want to push their service and they understand that people rather watch Netflix and Netflix is bringing out more content. And then YouTube, you can go on YouTube and watch 4K content via YouTube. Right now I could do that on my TV and that's how I'm able to watch all my 4K stuff. Yeah, but, but Jay, also there was an update, well, not update, but announcement that on the vanilla PS4s, Gonna There's going to be a future update for HDR. Yeah, yeah. That's and, uh, crazy. That that's that's uh, kind of game changing there, man. Well, yeah, yeah. For those that can take advantage of it. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, for those that can. Which uh, you know, I saw a video explaining the differences, and even though you couldn't tell during the stream, but there was a scene where he went out when he activated HDR. And he turned the camera, and you see the sun beaming right in your eyes. And I'm squinting like, damn. And, and that's what HDR is supposed to do. It's supposed to, like, whether you're playing a game or a movie, when you see an image like that where it's transitioning from a dark room to a lighted area where the sun is illuminating like that, you're going to squint, like, as if you're actually being blinded by the sun. And it, and it, you could even see it during the Call of Duty with the gunfire, when he was firing the gun, and you see the muzzle, the flash, and it was you know I was kind of squinted a little bit like it was real or something, and I was like, all right, well that's HDR. If you can take advantage of it, great. Supposedly my phone can, and I haven't, I don't even know how to try it out. So if your TV has it, I would I would hope somebody would let us know how it works out. When, when in November 10th, by the way, when the pro releases. So let's well, keep we going. Say that we all pre-ordered it, right? We all just pre-ordered it today. I, I yeah, did. I have one on, on Amazon, you know, and just so that I can hold one for myself if I, because I, I'm hearing, and this is what I want to talk about. I'm hearing so, so many different uh, statements, like Sony's. Uh, Mark Cerny said that hardware-wise, games that are developed to take advantage of this hardware, like he showed that Spider-Man, you know, when they did the close-up of Spider-Man, I mean, you see all this detail, look freaking crazy. So that tells me that the hardware, the jump in, in hardware specs, is actually going to mean something for game development, meaning that is not going to be upscaled. That's what I'm taking out of it. Then there's other people that are like, no, nah, it's going to be upscaled. It's going to be upscaled. That that 399 price tag is to be screams upscaled. But we you're right, we don't know what's going on. Yeah, like sure. Usually we can we can read something in the P, you know, during the underneath all the PR babble that will say it would, would indicate one direction over the other right like now just come out and say it right you know, come out. how hard is that yeah like right now let me see if i could read uh what 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 they're talking about here um because i have the press release and it's talking about blah, blah blah let me see with more pixels 4k's higher resolution delivers graphics that are sharper and have greater detail than ever imagined HDR enables visuals to look much closer to the way your eyes see the real world, which I was talking about the lighting, the sun. Let me see. Some developers are updating previously launched PS4 titles to add PS4 Pro support, while other developers are building PS4 Pro support into upcoming releases. At launch, you'll be able to download patches for games such as Uncharted 4. That's going to look freaking insane. That shit looks insane now which are enhanced when playing on the new console. Future releases that will have PS4 Pro enhancement built in include Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, Horizon Zero Dawn, which, yo, if you see it in 4K, <laughs> that looks crazy. I finally saw the video in, on 4K. And Mass Effect's and, uh, Andromeda, which, did you see that golf? See that video? I did, but I was watching it on my phone, so I really didn't get the full effect. It was good to see it. Oh, I was. I'm glad we saw footage. We know it's still in 2017, 
but it was so great to finally see some freaking new Mass Effect. So they're talking about hardware enhancements. Now, what exactly that freaking means? Uh, let me see. Uh, our engineers, no, our engineering and design team collaborated to consolidate PlayStation 4's high performance technology into a smaller, more blah, blah, blah. That's the slim they're talking about. So, yeah, I mean, it says with PlayStation 4 Pro, our goal is to deliver innovation in the form of cutting edge visuals and graphics while in the midst of the PlayStation 4's life cycle. You know, I think we're going to witness something very different too with this, Jay, because right around, well, during that week of release, you're going to see a lot of people going to GameStop, Best Buy, mm-hmm. and trading in their old shit, whether it's a PS4 or Xbox One, for this. And I, this is something new, but I, I think really as a retail outlet, whoever has the best deal. They're going to move the most stuff. Yeah, I mean, look, the fact is we're forgetting, and we haven't even mentioned that they still have, by the time this is released, you're going to have that rush of of holiday games. So mm-hmm. you're going to have PlayStation 4 games, third-party games, then you have Xbox exclusives like Gears of, of War 4. Which is October, so, right? Yes, I think the end of October. So, and let's not forget PlayStation VR. So there's oh, an abundance. Come on, man, of, no one's buying things. that, dude. Uh, people are gonna buy it. People, people are gonna, gonna buy, buy it, it, but are they gonna wear those goddamn goggles? I don't know, man. There, there's like more use being shown, like outside of video games. Yeah, I, I think so. for the game, if VR is for games, I don't think it's gonna do as good as. I just, I don't know. You know, it's, we're a month away because he just did say, say it. Press, say it. No, it, say it. I think it will flop. But, you know, he did say, they did mention it because he said it'll be out next month. And that was it. They didn't even touch again on that subject with the VR. Because they so, know. They know. Well, this was not an event for VR. Yeah, I know. Jay, VR said, has yeah. plenty of, has been having plenty of coverage, has commercials already. And they also have, I don't know if Tokyo Game Show is. Next it's week. It's going to be before. Jay, oh, it is know. next week. Okay. Next week. Jay, but, you know, he did make it on the showcase. I mean, there was talks of a Vita 2 being showcased today. Oh, I'm glad. All I'm glad that was it. That people I'm were glad saying. that was it. Yeah, it was. I mean, Vita 2, as much as I love my PlayStation Vita, I haven't played it in a while. You know? And so, also, when, oh, they did, oh, when, they did the screen, <laughs> when they did the screen of what the PlayStation Pro the VR was there, and he didn't really jump into that. He yeah, he said, past, you know, he, you know, he they passed, mentioned he, it briefly. They yeah, said, he, he commented on every other box, but when it came to the VR, he was like, yeah, it's VR, and they were just, like, gone. Like, they didn't really touch on the VR. So sometimes that's a warning, man. I, I just feel... No, like, he said, he said uh, with VR, developers can add more. They can yeah, add, and that was it. it but was, they have... Was, but remember, they got to be careful because he can't just come out and say... Yeah, you're gonna get a better experience with VR because then people are gonna be like, "What?" Well, but Jay, they had nothing. Hold on to show. a second. No, nothing. Nothing. Uh, what? VR. Or they what? Had nothing to no. show. They don't have to show. This wasn't about VR. This was about two brand new iterations of the PlayStation Four. This was, you know, that's why it was a short show. It was straight we, to the point. Here's, here's I think a point. lot of people were shocked how short it was, too, bro. Yes, it was very short. Because yeah. I mean, it wasn't yeah. Neff short, but it was. Short. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, there was rumors that it was going to be like an hour and a half, two hours, and it was basically forty-five minutes. It started what time? Two o'clock, right? Like, no, it started at three o seven when I started watching it, and by like three fifty-five, they were done. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was three o'clock. Right? Yeah, three o'clock. Hey, Jay, yeah, you know so Neff shops for jeans at. Oh damn! What <laughs> he goes? Uh, he goes to yard sales trying to find them old GI Joes. From the fifties, <laughs> you know, remember them? Oh man, that's crazy. Man. That's, where he, that's where he finds his jeans. Nah, <laughs> little howdy doody jeans. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's this? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, hello, you're cordially invited to join us. We prepare for upcoming launch of the highly anticipated PlayStation VR. Well, so I guess they're having a VR event down here in New York. 
Yeah, and that's like the other thing. That that's the other thing why I'm saying I'm a little like iffy with VR. We've been talking about the PlayStation Neo for months. VR really doesn't get talked about a lot. Maybe once in a while they'll throw it. Oh, this game's gonna have VR. Dude, but it doesn't go. <laughs> Yo, and I'm on the I'm on the sites all the time. I really don't hear like VR getting shoved down our throats like these systems were. Nah, dude. Wait. Nah, I, you I forgot about it. You, you forgot about E3 already. E3 was what three months ago. When have I ever heard? Yeah, that but how, how much they gotta? That? How much they're gonna repeat the same thing though? Like, oh, don't forget. They do VR. it with the systems. They've been doing it with the with the with the Neo. The Neo yeah, was like every Neo is new. And Neo, VR is new. Neo Neo was a rumor for how long? But VR is something new. Wouldn't you be excited with something new? This is gonna change gaming. This is gonna do. Yeah, something I see else. commercials already for it. I don't know where because you I, haven't I seen mean, no commercials. Nope. I see I'm a lot. lot. And I, I watch TV. I see. I see a lot of the. Um, Maybe because I, I watch it on a DVR and I skip until, commercials until but, dawn. I mean, until dawn, a commercial they show a lot, the carnival, whatever the thing. And then the games. I mean, what do you have? VR missions because you don't have a real good game until January. Yeah, I mean the games. That's going to be the most important thing. It's like all the games are going to appeal to people, <clears throat> but you can't go around like every day. Hey, VR, VR, VR. It's around. People are talking about it, but you know, there's only so much you can talk about it. Because there's nothing new to be shown. Now we're at the point where these events, like I just got invited to, are going to occur. And people are going to get hands-on. I already got hands-on. I think you did, right, Eddie? No, I didn't go. Oh, okay. And now all all that's left is for the, for the damn thing to prove that it's more than a gimmick. That's going to be the real freaking test, you know? So with these new consoles... The PS4, the Pro, it's for dudes like like us who are willing to take a chance and trade in our current stuff and pay a little extra. But, Jay, where's the chance at? I, I think it's I, I honestly, uh, you know, no fanboy bullshit. Yes, chance for Sony... what? VR? Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about upgrading for. Oh, no, no, no. Pro. I, I'm just saying who, because who, people were like, but who is this for? Who is this for? You know, it's for the, the VR. You talk about the VR. No, the oh. the the PS the the Pro. Well, I honestly, I think the Pro is going to be there for a lot of people because you're getting the controller upgrade, you're getting a nice console upgrade, you're getting more memory, and well, I think the memory is the same. Six. Uh, you're talking about storage, right? Storage. Storage. Yeah, yeah, because it's it has the gig eight gigs of memory, and then it has the terabyte. Yeah. Of storage. Yeah, you, you definitely you're definitely getting an upgrade for the price of the launch console, what we paid during launch, and and that's impressive when you consider that it's double the power, and you, it's not, it, it's a hundred dollars more basically, <clears throat> what we're paying. But it doesn't make people, the PS4 though obsolete. No, it doesn't, because that's the plan, and and that's that's what I was trying to say with Eddie. They really can't throw out too much shit about VR and say, yeah, you're going to get a better experience if developers take advantage of the pro, because basically that's what he was insinuating. But they really can't highlight it because then now you begin to segregate. Isolate. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're like, and people are going to be like, shit, man, should I even bother with the current one? Because that's so when you think we get that's going to be the real money five. maker. I say another three, maybe four years. So we're not gonna get nothing in between then, like a PlayStation Pro Plus. Nah, that would be that would be too much. Like, I got a feeling that what Microsoft is going to do will affect their next move. It gives them time to see just how more powerful the Scorpio is going to be when compared to the Pro and how that user base, the Xbox user base is going to be treated. Meaning will they say, screw it we got to make games that highlight this brand new console, so we're going to make three to four exclusives that are only available on this console and we got to sell it 
does Microsoft have that luxury? Because right now, you know, we all know they're lagging behind the PlayStation 4. They're, they're so far behind that their next strategy was a no-brainer. It was bringing out a new console. And there's going to be a brand new console. And it's not going to be a Pro. It's not going to be the S. Because the power they're talking about is equivalent to a freaking mid-level PC. But, Jake, so going, going back to the Significant Pro, power. What, what mm-hmm. kind of differences are we going to see from the PS4 vanilla and the Pro? Like, I'll give you an example. Let's just say, um, you know, uh, Destiny 2 comes out. Well, it will be coming out, and on the pro, the single player campaign is you know 1080p, 4K, 60 frames a second. Where on the OG vanilla PS4, It'll be 30, 1080p, it's 30 1080p. Do you think that's what we're going to see? Yeah, yeah, and 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 they already reiterated that when it comes to multiplayer games, they're not going to they're going to keep it even. The same, yeah. And on the, the Xbox One, it would be 720p. 30 frames a second. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. <clears throat> and then on the, you know, whenever the Scorpio comes out, because that Scorpio does not exist. And people are like, oh, the Scorpio is destroying it. And, and I'm like, based on what? A few words that... Isn't Major Nelson already playing on it? Doesn't he already have one? No, nah, no. Nah. <laughs> wow. So the, the Scorpio doesn't exist, only on paper and word of mouth. I could have swore he was playing Halo Six on it, but I had nah. And well, doesn't the eight we, teraflops exist? Some shit like that. It was, was it? six eight, teraflops. Six? Oh, okay. Yeah. So you have one point eight more teraflops than the Pro is going to have, and who knows? Maybe Microsoft, because quite honestly, by the time next year, next holiday, which is when this you know their new console is launching. Six teraflops ain't going to be as impressive as what is going to be available during that time. So who knows? Maybe they up it to more. So you're saying Scorpio next be holiday, Jay? Is that what you're saying? That's what they said. That's yeah. what they said. So, okay, so Scorpio next holiday, PlayStation 5, holiday 2019? Uh, maybe 20. Okay, well. It depends. Well, what's going to happen is, yeah. The PS4 Pro is going to have a one-year advantage on the Scorpio, but mm-hmm. the Scorpio is going to come out and be way more powerful. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Well, they, well, they we have... don't know if it's way more. We don't know. But Because a lot the of people luxury. are saying, okay, Eddie. They'll have the luxury. You know, Microsoft will have the luxury now because they know what they have to compete against. The PlayStation will be out, you know, like they said, November. So that gives Microsoft, let's say, a year because they said next year holiday. So that gives them a whole year to make sure if they want to have a powerful cons- console more than PlayStation to up their specs. Yeah, but but Eddie, Sony's going to have a one-year advantage of 4K gaming in 2017. Yeah, but look at you. You go wherever the graphics are better, don't you? That's what you like, and there's people out there that are like that. So if you tell them, okay, you have your Pro, but your Scorpio is going to be more powerful and is going to show better graphics, You'll get people that might switch. You know, I'm not saying everybody will, but you have people like you. Like you're a graphic whore. I am. They'll do that. Well, that comes at I'm a the price. Miley I mean, Cyrus yeah. of- ah, because <laughs> if 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 they're talking about this one is you know 4.2 teraflops, right? And mm-hmm. the Scorpio is supposed to be six. So we're talking about 1.8 teraflops, a difference in 1.8. How I, much I- is how mu- you know, and besides whatever else they're going to add, how much more, if it's going to be that much more powerful, how much more is it going to cost? Is it going yeah. to cost? They're, they're going to need games, OJ. They are going to need Exactly. Games. They're going to need gonna fucking need- games, man. They, they that like, you, you said this months ago where you don't think that the Scorpio is going to be that big of an impact because the same people are, are at Microsoft. Oh, yeah, I believe it. You made that. some kind of comment like that. Yep. But I, I think, it. though, Jay, the X factor in this, and I know you're not a fan of this, but early content access on third party titles is getting bigger and bigger. Because you're, lo- you're looking at <clears throat> Destiny, as far as an example goes, 
Yeah. The Xbox players are really getting the short end of the stick. Oh, yeah. It's like yeah. weapons and gear goes. I mean, look they got to wait a year, maybe yeah, even longer at... to get some of the stuff, some of the exotic yeah. weapons. Yeah. Um, look and at, I look at there Mass Effect. Lot, there was a lot of negativity with Microsoft getting early access on the division where mm-hmm. Sony players only had to wait, I think, a month and a half yeah. for the expansions, yeah. and people were losing their minds. So yeah, I think it's not all good. this early access stuff, Jay, I think that's going to be a big X factor coming up in 2017 and 18. Yeah, unfortunately. And it's I know you right hate now. it. I <laughs> yeah, I mean, even look at Mario on, on the iPhone now. Yes. That's coming out on iPhone first, and then we'll eventually make its way to Android. So it's making, you know, that exclusivity. Who uses Androids? Make- I mean, nah. <laughs> you know, nobody's, nobody uses an Android. Nah. So that's just an indication that, you know, the more popular demographic gets the favorable uh, no. deals. I it's mean, look at Titanfall. Titanfall. Money, Jay. <laughs> let's, let's no. Here. Come it's on. The money. That's not true because if that was the case, Microsoft would not be in their current position with, with the Xbox. Yeah, I mean, but who, Jay, they, who, they paid a shit ton of money to get early access to the division. But Sony has way more consoles. It's whoever has. Yeah, that's what I'm talking problem. about. That's what I'm talking about. The bigger demographic, that the money talks. Look at Titanfall. Supposedly, they, it's not going to be part of EA Access because there's some marketing deal with Sony. So that started out as an Xbox exclusive, and now the tide has turned, and rightfully so. Can we talk about Titanfall yeah. too? For a little bit. Yeah, yeah, we'll get to that. Uh, I just want to no make sure. That's all I wanted to say. Ah, <laughs> I just want to see if I missed anything. They showed Watch Dogs 2. And they showed a little bit of Spider-Man. Mm. No interest in that. And so, yeah, I mean, we're, we're going to see Tokyo Game Show. That Maybe they'll show a few more games being played on it. If it's coming out in November, that means... It's very close to to uh, pretty much to ship actual, it. yeah, to actual full specs and and full, being fully operational. So maybe we'll see more of these games. But the trick is, they don't fully want to show off their most powerful console just yet. You know, I guess as as it gets closer to launch, they'll focus on it. But right now. There's so many games coming out for the current PS4 that they don't want to alienate that demographic because it's their larger demographic, and that's where the money and the success is coming from. So I could see why they left VR out of it, and they left a lot of information out of the actual show. Then information came out later, but we'll hear more about it. But it was very interesting to finally see the damn thing. And the thing you got to remember, too, and I hope people know that, it's for you to really enjoy this console, you're really going to need a 4K TV. 4K TV, yeah. And they say, you know, they also say you don't, if you don't have one, you'll still see a bump in visual fidelity and Mm -hmm. performance. Yeah, Jay, we were talking about that before the the podcast because I game on a 27-inch high-end gaming monitor. Yeah. You know, low lag, um, and it, it's a, a quite a powerful monitor. So for me, getting the PlayStation Pro, it's it's not going to be that huge of a difference for me visually right away. But, but performance if I, wise, four, I guess. if I had a 4K 50 inch, you know, then I'd really see the difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and they even sell 4K monitors, so. Yeah, but I'm really anal when it comes to lag, so I need something that has low yeah, lag. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> yeah, so like for golf, he really doesn't need a pro then. What do you mean I don't need well, a pro? I'm getting a guy. They're game. saying you'll see performance but he's not gonna besides visual experience. No, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, I'm, you're not. He's not. So, so. Uh, I'm only going in halfway. I'm not going in full throttle. Didn't they teach you you got to go all the way? Well. <laughs> and I like really quick, really quick. Uh, you know, Aaron Greenberg, he's uh, an Xbox executive, and uh, he, he goes on after the event and goes, proud to bring true 4K gaming and most powerful console ever made coming with Project Scorpio. 
So there goes, once again, the same dude, actually, catering to the Flame Wars, to the, to the console war, knowing that this console doesn't exist. There's no proof as to what he's saying because it is not made yet. Like, of course, it's being developed, it's being created, but there's nothing to back up his statement. And, of course, what's going to happen? He's going to... He's igniting the, the the freaking flame wars, inviting people to go at him. So I don't I don't want you know you people know talk me about Microsoft people talk trash today? about us, but then you know you see these dudes doing, it and they're supposed to be the. the what, what bothers me about Microsoft and their campaign is you know um, the one thing that bothers me is they say that they have the best games, the best gaming lineup, and like oh, when they yeah, and Xbox the history, last year, yeah. The that last two years, dude, they've been saying that. That really bothers me more than anything. Like, they can say what they want about 4K and Blu-ray and HDR gaming and all that. That's awesome. But don't say your games are the greatest. Yeah, well. Just don't. Just don't say your games are the greatest. Because Halo is why... 5 was a huge flop. Huge. You know Halo was... 5 is the worst-selling Halo game ever? Yeah, yeah. You know ODST? Basically an expansion? Outsold Halo Five. Hmm. Outsold it. Google it. Oh, really? Wow. By millions. Hmm. Yeah, it, it's. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Just saying. But. But I think Gears Four is going to be dope as shit. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm looking forward to that horde mode. It looks really, really good, and I'm definitely picking that up. So let's talk about Battlefield One beta because I know. Yeah, I want to talk about it. it a little bit. Yeah, I did on PS4. So what do you think? Uh, well, for me, I, I'm probably the worst person to ask about it because I'm not an EA guy. I just don't like EA shooters. I did enjoy Battlefield 4. Um, I did like Battlefield uh, Battlefront because I'm a Star Wars geek. Uh, but just the, the concept, the way the games play, I'm just not a fan of it. And I played the beta a few times, and um, after playing it, I – Save sixty dollars, but that's just I'm not an EA guy. I don't like their I don't like their shooters. Hmm. And visually, I'm not impressed with it visually. I think Battlefield Four and definitely Battlefront looks way better. But this is a beta. I just don't like the concept, Jay, of being on this huge map and I'm this tiny little ant, and there's so many things that can kill me. Whether it's a tank, whether it's a sniper from across the map, which is mm -hmm. cool. I mean, we are there to kill each other, but I think that skill – as skill goes, these type of EA games kind of cater more towards – I don't know. Campers? Not, yeah, it's a slower pace. It's, it's, more, it's more casual where in Call of Duty, the time to kill is so quick. It's and okay. yeah, you are, there, there are – the maps are a lot smaller, so I think they do require a lot more skill and hand speed where these games are more methodical, and it's just – I just don't like that type of shooter. Oh, okay. And it's yeah, I want to try it's it. It's an EA thing, you know? You, you have to try Rush that, uh... Mode. You have to try Rush Mode. It's a little bit more enclosed than compared to the other map, which I, because I was playing it, and I didn't, I don't like it because I hate when we go back to that World War One, World War Two type of weapons and stuff, so that's why I don't like it. But once I started playing Rush, it's a little bit better because, you know, it's not everything's trying to kill you like what Golf is saying. But the game is, yeah, it's basically you can't go in there with a run and shoot. It's not an arcadey field to a battlefield. Yeah, you got to be very careful when you're walking around the map. Mm -hmm. You you, you got to be hiding constantly. Now, when I had Battlefield 4 on the PS4, I, I played – I put a lot of hours into that, but I only played Team Deathmatch pretty much. Yeah. And, and Eddie, you played it, right? Yeah, I've, I've been playing it. And what do you think? Like I said, uh, like I was just saying right now with golf, is I don't like the game, and I can't say it is bad or good, but just for my liking, I don't like it because I hate that old World War One, World War Two type of feel. I don't like those games, but graphically wise, I don't agree with golf where it's bad. I think it's decent because there's uh, some points of the games like the sandstorms and the weather effects are pretty cool. That I, I like that part of the game. But it's just a point of you get spawned like in Section A, and it can take you three minutes to walk to Section B or, you know, to get there. 
to get shot as soon as you get there. And then you're like, oh, shit, I got to start all over again. That's where I think I, I don't like the game. Because like yeah. in Call of Duty, where you just spawn and, yo, right there, if you spawn at the wrong section, you're done. There's a, You can land anywhere with a bunch of people. And with Battlefield, it's not like that. It's more... You got to really plan the game. It's a more slower pace type of game. Yeah, to me, the firefights in the EA shooters are just not to my liking. I don't enjoy the firefights at all. You didn't like Battlefield because Battlefield Four was not bad. I like Battlefield Four, and I, I, Eddie, I said I think Battlefield Four and Battlefront um, mm. visually look better in this game, especially Battlefront. Battlefront's one of the best looking games this gen. Yeah, Battlefront. I, I, well, I think Battlefield looked. Battlefield was very it was very good looking. I mean it had the bugs in the beginning. But then again, we're going off a of beta, you know. I don't want yeah. people to say, Oh, they're already criticizing and it's a it is a beta. I don't like the firefights in EA shooters, if that makes any sense. I just mm-hmm. think that they're just not fun to me. And um and, and for me, playing games like Destiny and the Division and even Call of Duty has a lot of RPG elements, but those loot based shooters it's like I, I just they're enjoy addicted. them more than going back to playing a game like Battlefield where you know, you're just killing people. And yeah, you're going to get better weapons and stuff, but the, the content there, like the reward system, besides killing players, the content is just not there for me. Hmm. But that's why we like other games, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and plus it's a, it's a beta, a stress test, so... I'm going to pick Eddie. it up, but, but this is going to Are be- you really? Yeah, but this is going to be a game. But again, listen, I'm going to pick it up. You know when they go on sale? Because we all know Black Friday, games will go on sale. So this this will be a game that I know because I know a lot of my friends are going to get it. So I'm going to want to play with them. So it's not going to be a day one where I got to be there, but I will eventually get it. Yeah. It won't be super cheap on Black Friday, though. You know, I, so, I, man, I think EA games come down real quick, man. I, I think it'll be a $40, $30 game. That's still good with Best Buy Gamers Club. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm going to hold off. This, uh, See, Jay, you didn't play games. the beta, right? No, I'm hoping I can try you it real quick day, tonight. You got, you got till tomorrow. Yep. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to download it and, and give it a shot. Um, Now, the since you guys are getting the pro, I'm still up in the air. I just pre-ordered one just to lock one in. Oh, so you're but, not guaranteed yet? Uh, I have it on Amazon. I talked him into it. I mean, you got a 4K TV. I mean, for you, mm-hmm. that's, like, yeah. that's perfect. Jay, so you're those... going to get one because as soon as we start talking about it, you're going to fucking go get one. <laughs> See, <laughs> know. You know, Jay, you know you're going to get one. So why why, why sit there and deny it? I mean, well, the, the, thing, the thing I wanted to know. You're the only one on the podcast that doesn't have one. Now, how weird is that going to be? <laughs> you know he's going to have one, man. Well, I'll probably be the only one with, with VR, you know, so who knows? Cause... No, dude, Derek, my... Derek is going to have no, VR. D- Derek oh, canceled Derek. his. Derek canceled, canceled, canceled his. Yes. Yeah. Because, you why? know, things, he's a PC gamer now. <laughs> well, things popped up and he, he said he needs the money for oh. the holidays and stuff. Okay. Me, I'm more concerned with. Do I go with possibly the future? I'm not going to call it the future of gaming. That's a beta, dude. It but is a- it's <laughs> but VR could be the start of a new form of video game interaction. Or do I go with the more powerful console? Jay, so that's that's my determination very, right now. So here's a here's a quick shitty question. Shitty graphics running 60 frames a second with VR. That, that's my quick question. Like right now, you get VR. How much is VR? Mm-hmm. Three ninety nine, right? Yes. So it's the same price as the Pro. And VR is really to get its full potential, you really got to buy a PlayStation Pro. Because uh, who knows? It's still gonna be fucking. So you're looking at how much are you looking to spend just to go into VR? That's a lot of. I mean, again, I'm doing the same thing because I'm buying a TV. Just to play a PlayStation Pro. So either way you look at it, you're going to spend money. Oh, yeah. You're spending some cash yourself. Um, really quick, somebody put PlayStation Pro will, will use super sampling for those who do not have a 4K TV. I don't know what the hell super sampling is. What does that mean? Because <laughs> <laughs> Is that where you go to Costco? And nah. you have all the free food. <laughs> and, and, then you go, and then you go home, <laughs> you change your outfit, and you come back and you do it again. <laughs> Uh, Super sampling, but they showed the uh, you know some. They said some games are gonna have these patches and everything to look good. Yeah, because they had uh, Infamous First Light, and that game is old. 
Mm -hmm. But somebody made a great out? somebody made a great point yeah. that that Dragon people gonna Punch. that people gonna replay these games just to see how they look. And, I mean, uh, Inf Infamous Second Son looked great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Begin with. Now, how much better it's going to look? I, I would definitely want to know. <laughs> I would definitely love to find out. Speaking of looking, did you guys see how good Call of Duty 4 Remaster looks? Oh, yes. I Holy saw that. Uh, they had it at PAX. God damn. Not PAX, that sealed deep thing. I'm going to be all over that like a Wookiee on some beef jerky. <laughs> I cannot wait to play that. Somebody put that the the. Because somebody, so there were some people on Twitter, of course, uh, comparing that, saying that S Xbox One S is better than the Pro. Somebody put that it's three times more powerful than the One S. So, because hmm. even the current PS4 is more powerful than the S. So, regardless, whatever people want to say about not having a Blu-ray player, spec-wise, it's a legit upgrade. It's no little minor freaking upgrade. It's a beefy upgrade. Hey, I'll say this, Jay. The Xbox mm -hmm. Slim is probably better if you're more into home theater and movies and mm -hmm. shit. Yeah, cool. yeah. If you, yeah, exactly. If you wanna, if you really wanna buy Blu-ray movies physically, and you want a cheap Blu-ray player at three uh, two ninety nine, which is what the five hundred gig S is is currently going for and sometimes you can find them for a little cheaper so that's a great hey there's no doubting that if you want a blu-ray 4k blu-ray player you, it's best to go with the xbox one s because it's probably the cheaper blu-ray yeah. player now there was one more thing i did want to talk about because as i stated colin kaepernick Ah, <laughs> it was it was going to be all freaking. I can't believe they're going to trade him to the Giants. Yeah, right. <laughs> Let me look at my notes here real quick because I I jotted something down during the week, and eh, I guess nothing but freaking Sony stuff. And really quick, Eddie, I mean are you getting the iPhone Seven? Either one of you? Uh, um, let me. It was a choice between the iPhone 7 or the PlayStation Pro, so I chose. Oh, you chose wisely. <laughs> I don't know if I, I have wisely, but. <laughs> I, I, ha <clears throat> I have the Note 7, uh -huh. and I registered so that I can take, you know, I could return mine because of the battery. Now, mine is fine. My son's, his, his works fine. The battery doesn't get hot, but, you know, everyone's like, yo, just do it because Samsung. It's going to do it for free, so just get a new one. So I'm on the list for when they get a new one. I just go to the store, pick it up. I can also get a refund. So I was like, you know what? How ironic is it that I originally was going to wait oh boy. for the iPhone 7. Maybe he's going to have an iPhone 7. <laughs> no, nah, probably not. There was nothing that really pushed me over the edge. I do like, like iOS 10, though. Yeah, yeah, but... There's so much flexibility with Android right now that it's like, you know what? I, I, you know, I still have my iPad Pro, which I use every day with the pencil. Yeah, keep that so, so I'm, I'm not missing. Yeah, that's how <laughs> you and I, yeah, <laughs> that's how we get. It's true. Like, I said stuff to JDB, <clears throat> and he'll, like, respond three days later. But they do have it. No, I'm not going to lie. It does happen because I have a group chat with um, people who have Android, and for some reason, the us that have the iPhones, we be getting our messages quick, and sometimes it takes two to three hours before they get their text messages. Oh, really? Chat. Yeah, no, it, that that does that is an an occurring thing that happens. I don't know if maybe just because they're not compatible, but they're they'll not, be talking they're junk, garbage, not powerful. I don't enough. know if they're junk. I mean, they got nice designs. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Some of those designs on those Galaxy phones. Yo, the Galaxy the Seven. That's nice. why I went with it because I was like, yo, that thing, it like no bezel, and I mean, it looks. Yeah. I was like. Dude, I was looking at the 7 today, and I was like, please have something. Oof. I like the, the I like that black, but they were saying that it's going to show scuff marks. Apple even said it, that it will show eventually more micro scuff marks. 
I means, like the dull, the dull that, black one. Oh no, I like that jet black. That was like, oh, I was like shit. <laughs> but I was like, all right, at least tell me the fucking resolution of the screen has changed, and it's still the same, it, same as seven. I mean, as six and as the five. Well, mainly the six because the six is the first entry. You didn't like screen. the camera. You're big into photos. That camera didn't like. Well. I, ha- I carry a mirrorless camera everywhere. So I carry cameras around with me to work. So it's not like I need. The 7 has a great camera as well. So that was the, the other thing. I was like, all right, introduce something that will be like, all right, no brainer. <laughs> you know, like, and it, it just didn't do it. I was like, oh, fuck. And then I, they were really slick. They weren't showing the actual phone. They were showing the back. They were showing yeah. the camera. <laughs> I'm like, show the damn phone, dude. And they showed it in the video real quick. But then I saw some videos of people uh, previewing it, you know, testing it out and blah, blah, blah. So I was like, all right, it looks, from the front, it looks exactly like a 6 and a 6S. And it has that, I like the force touch home button. Yeah. That you can do a lot of different features with. And I like the 3D touch. That That's very innovative in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, I, I, st- I got that with mine, the 3D touch. So there's some plus. I, you, know, I, you know I like both mm-hmm. systems, but uh, I wanted the, 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 big, the biggest issue I had with even the iPad Pro is that with the Note 7, there's a distinguishing feature. Because of its size and it has the pencil, there are things that are strictly for the Note 7 that you can't find in another phone. Well, another Samsung phone. With iOS, they want to keep it the same on any platform. So my freaking 12-inch, almost 13-inch iPad has the same fucking operating system as my phone. And that kind of sucks because it doesn't utilize that screen real estate, the pencil. Like, it doesn't give me these freaking... Features that is only available on the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, so it's a universal system. Which, you know, I can understand that Apple wants to keep everything familiar and everything mm-hmm. coordinated when you're sharing between devices. But it sucks when you have a big freaking phone like the 7 Plus or the 12.9 inch iPad, and there's not nothing really taking advantage of it. So that's why I was like, all right, at least the Note 7. They're taking advantage of it, utilizing things strictly for the pencil and everything. So I was like, if Apple doesn't show me multi-window functionality, I was like, uh, I'm just going to back out. Now I'm a little pissed off because I want to download Watch OS 3. Yeah. I got to figure out. I think I got to go to the store and download it. And uh, the the freaking watch, the current watch is going to be, what, 229 or some crazy yeah, but it's something to me is for me it's not worth the upgrade because all the differences. Yes, it has a you know the the, the bigger uh, memory in it, um, but it's just waterproof. They didn't change the way the watch looks. They kept it. Yeah, it has so, GPS. Yeah, yeah it has so, a you know it's a little. They bit said battery bad. life is is a little bit. It's a battery life basically the same, but when you consider it has more, it has that GPS and something else, you know. But that's the thing. I don't use the GPS now. So for me, yeah, to make the jump to the watch right now, it's I don't need it. I would have liked the phone, but like I said, I this PS this PS4 Pro is going to cost me. <laughs> so <laughs> really, really quick, Neil Drunkman from Naughty Dog. He said Uncharted Four and The Last of Us look stellar in HDR. He goes, high res is cool, but man, HDR lighting. It brings it to another level. Now, I'm assuming those two games are going to get uh, updates, and and those two games That's rely crazy last on a lot. Lo- you know, now, I I missed. I maybe I missed it, or he didn't say when the new firmware is coming out, right? No, and oh. that's what I, I thought today would be the day because of the yesterday's maintenance. Well, was it so, maintenance? Because me and Deal were having this talk. When I went on their Twitter... That's what they kept putting. It kept they, saying... The PlayStation said maintenance. maintenance, but their Twitter said they knew that they were having technical issues with the PlayStation Network. So 
If it was maintenance, why wouldn't both say, oh, we're down for maintenance? Yeah, I got a feeling that... And that's been two times in the in less than two weeks that they've been down like that. So that doesn't yeah, look got... good either with that pro- $10 price hike. Oh, and I know it's only $10. Price. I know it's only ten dollars, but yeah, I mean, come oh, on, no. Eddie. I wish you wouldn't have brought that up, man. I am so ah. pissed about that. But it's why true. are you it's pissed off, Why? Mm-hmm. Because where, where, where's the ten dollars going? Where did the ten dollars go for Xbox when they increased it to sixty dollars? I, I, like I don't three see, years ago. I don't see the reason for it, except that we need more money. Not only that, but cost of operations, everything goes up. Tolls are going up like a motherfucker over here, Tolls, and it's still Tolls. the same service. <laughs> but the, Roads but the still is, like, suck. You announce it go up $10, and you're having this problem. Like, Oh, yeah. It's well, I'm row. sure. It kind of, uh, you start to worry. You're like, hold on. Well, you're asking me for more money. I expect something more stable. Uh, I'll, something. Give yeah, but, I'll give you an But, example. Eddie, I, Eddie, think about how stable it has been. For most of the year, though, yeah, I mean, yeah, no, we can't, no, we can't just bash it can now. Can you guys but... an example of some horror stories that I've had where I've yeah, paid yeah. Uh, 45 50 bucks for UFC pay-per-views, <laughs> and I'm watching it <laughs> on the PS4, and yeah. all of a sudden the shit goes out. And I got to yeah, start it up, that's... reboot it, and that happened to me twice. And then finally on yeah, my second pay-per-view, that, I got burned yeah. on the main event, and I contacted Sony, and Why? they refunded me. Why did it crash again? The main yeah, event? it crashed during the main event, the stream or whatever. And I have good ass internet. Yeah. So yeah, I was figure they're pushing this view now. They're pushing view big because you, you hear it on the radio. You see oh, yeah, it on it's TV be as on another different form of cable. different devices now. Yes. Yeah. Not only view, but PlayStation Now mm, uh, is on PC. So they're pushing PlayStation Now. On different devices as well, and it went, it went back to ninety nine for one year. I, I want just, two a la carte on my cable. That's what I want. I want a la carte where I can pick what fucking channels I want. Why can't I have yeah. that? Why must everything be packages? I know because that's I how know. they're going to get your money. Of course, because they they'll force you money. if they let no, me but... pick out the thirty channels I want, but they won't get their money. From the television shows. Yeah, because you got to remember, like, uh, a channel like ESPN, it costs them more than those other regular channels. Yes. So they're going to force ESPN with all those crappy channels you don't want because they're going to force you to get that ESPN so that they could get their money out of that. You're right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I mean, every company, regardless who it is, their main main end game is that they want money. They're in it for, Mm -hmm. for money. So I'm actually surprised it didn't go up ten dollars a few years ago, and that it took this long. Because remember that they have PlayStation Share. Yes. They came out with uh, PlayStation Plus. Xbox came out with their own version of PlayStation Plus. So it's not like they haven't added features since its iteration. Uh, PlayStation Plus, that is. They've added some features not found in anywhere else and for most of the year it's been a steady service now i don't know if their shit is crashing because they have people testing out the new i hope update. that's the reason i hope that's the reason <laughs> uh, who knows you, you know, know i'd like but... to see jay and this is probably like crazy you know thinking but i would really like to see sony and microsoft offer uh... offer internet no that would be shit the cable companies will be Fuck up in arms for that. Oh. Screw Comcast, screw Time yeah, Warner, I, I screw agree. The Dish, screw all that. Let Sony and Microsoft start offering internet. Yeah, that would internet that package would... deals. Where guess what? I write one check. It goes to Sony or Microsoft for my mm-hmm. cable, for my internet, for my gaming. That's what they should do. But then you got to be careful yeah. because then they can. Dictate the price themselves. You don't want. You want to have competition, Eddie. We want, with more competition, they're they're not going to be able to raise the prices. So you think more competition will get more expensive? No, I'm saying if. Oh, uh, I thought you said you just wanted Microsoft and Sony to deal with that. Nobody. Well, I want else. them. Yeah, I want Microsoft, Sony. Yeah, uh, all of them. I want them to all have. Oh no, that's good. The more competition, yeah. the better there is, because that's how it's happening now with um Apple. Why don't cell Apple phone. do it? No, and Apple cell phones. Apple. 
cell phones too now, you know, T-Mobile's pushing boundaries back to the unlimited data to where Verizon and Sprint now are starting to offer a little, you know, they're not at the unlimited yet, but they're giving you a little bit more data because people will go. Even though, like for me, T-Mobile is a little bit crappy in this area, but when you look at it, that I could sit there and watch a whole stream and not have to worry about data, I'd rather go to T-Mobile than to deal with Verizon. Well, the biggest vampires are these fucking cable companies. They are absolute Oh, vampires. of course, yeah. yeah. Bloodthirsty, blood-sucking vampires. Well, I switch my cable every two years for that reason. So do I. <laughs> because I get the packages. You know, like right now, I got Direct TV. I only pay 90 bucks. Yep. Yeah, but then, yeah. then you're that guy that signs a contract, right, for two years, and then they offer, like, new buyer programs where it's much cheaper. Then you got to mm-hmm. call. you got to fight with a service <laughs> rep. I mean, yeah, but I keep those for two years. You know what? At 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 ninety bucks, like at the end of my two years, I'm only gonna be paying one thirty. That's still cheaper than me having. I was paying two hundred and twenty dollars for Verizon. Yeah, that that is that is. So it's still good. cheaper. So I'll stay the two years, and then when the two years are over, I'll look for another package where maybe Comcast Verizon has it cheap. You go to them. So you yeah, know, but Eddie, wouldn't it be so much more refreshing? Yes, it would. To it, just go through one source. Either Sony, whatever. If you want to do both, you know, Sony, Microsoft, whatever. Just one check, one place, one payment. That's all you got to worry about. My gaming, my cable, my internet, all through the Sony service or Microsoft. And yeah, you can have Time Warner, you can have your Comcast and your. But you know, dish. Sony's trying to do that with PlayStation View. They added, they added one of the channels that they really needed was Sports Center and mm-hmm. the yep. NFL. That's yeah. a big add-on to that service. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. Give me internet. Give me internet too. Man, you just want the whole package, then shit. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm sick, I'm happy, sick of you know? having like all these websites that you know I'm paying to. Let's just do it all in one shot, man. Streamline yeah, well, shit. Put in me in charge. Perfect world. Oh. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna wrap it up. But uh, as always, I thank everyone for listening to PGR, and I thank you guys for joining me today. To talk about the PlayStation Four Pro, mm-hmm. and for those listening, let us know what you think of the. Think about the PlayStation 4 Pro. If you're going to pick one up, and if you agree with the specs, if you if you find them interesting, if you don't like the fact that there's no Blu-ray uh, 4K Blu-ray player, let us know on our Twitter at Post Game Report or one word. So, hopefully next week, like I say every freaking week, hopefully we have the entire crew back, uh, so they can give their own assessment. Uh, and analytical expertise. Yeah, I really want to about podcast the with, with Neff um, and Heroic again. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Uh, Heroic just will be back. School. Heroic. Yeah, hopefully he comes Eddie, back. Eddie, can I ask you a serious question about Heroic? Go right ahead. Does he use straightener on his beard? Nah, he has a comb that he combs every, like, 20 <laughs> minutes. I'm not even going to lie, because I've been with him, and every 20 minutes he takes out that damn comb to comb his beard. It looks like he straightened his beard with like a girl like hair straightener, a relaxer. Nah, it's it's all those oils he uses, and I'm telling you, he literally. Yo. If you hang out with him for one day, you'll see that comb about twenty times. Nice, and that's yeah. Well, hopefully, his beard. hopefully, we'll have him on next week. It just looks very like <laughs> over manicured, unnatural looking. I don't know. Nah, he takes uh, good care of it, man. Yeah, yeah. It's a nice looking beard. He's straightening that shit with a fucking <laughs> girl hair straightener. I guarantee. You. And then he's so you, glow. When he's with you, he's combing it to make it look like that's what he's doing. <laughs> ah, so glow up, up in that piece. Yep. All right, everyone. You guys have a good night, and we'll be talking to you guys next week.